Alright everyone, welcome. We're continuing our reading of the Bible. This is Jehovah's Witness version, New World Translation. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 19, picking up on verse 1 where we left off. Let's begin. When Jehovah your God cuts off the nations whose land Jehovah your God is giving you, and you have dispossessed them and have dwelt in their cities and their houses, you will set apart three cities for yourself in the midst of your land that Jehovah your God is giving you to take possession of it. You will prepare for yourselves the way, and you must divide up the territory of your land that Jehovah your God proceeded to give you as possession into three parts, and it must be for any manslayer to flee there. Now, this is the case of the manslayer who may flee there and has to live when he strikes his fellow man without knowing it, and he has no hater of him firmly or when he goes with his fellow man into the woods to gather wood, and his hand has been raised to strike with the axe to cut the tree, and the iron has slipped off from the wooden handle, and it has hit his fellow man, and he has died. He himself should flee to one of these cities, and must live. So it's still intention there, right? It's like it was an accident. Otherwise, the avenger of blood may, because his heart is hot, chase after the manslayer, and actually overtake him, since the way is great, and he may indeed strike his soul fatally. Whereas there is no sentence of death for him, because he was no hater of him formerly. That is why I am commanding you, saying, Three cities you will set apart for yourself. Okay, so three cities. And if Jehovah your God widens out your territory according to that what he swore to your forefathers, and he has given you all the land that he promised to give your forefathers. Because you will keep all this commandment that I am commanding you today by doing it. To love Jehovah, your God, and to walk in his ways always, you must then add three other cities for yourself to these three, that no innocent blood may be spilled in the midst of your land that Jehovah, your God, is giving you as inheritance, and no blood guilt has to be upon you. So in your land... Don't allow innocent blood. So if you're religious, this would mean that, you know, Italy, they shouldn't have abortion and such like that. There's innocent blood, right? If you have a high percentage of religious people, you need to make it to where no innocent blood is spilled. You have to keep these commandments. It's quite clear. There's a lot of rules in here that you need to follow. But in case there should happen to be a man hating his fellow man, and he has lain in wait for him and has risen up against him and struck his soul fatally, and he has died, and the man has fled to one of these cities, the older men of his city must then send and take him from there, and they must deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, and he must die. Now that is interesting. See, notice this, the older men. Imagine if you had something like this, how many criminals wouldn't be repeat offenders? And it's weird when you see people so soft on people on death row who've committed atrocities. It's really disgusting. Your eyes should not feel sorry for him, and you must clear away the guilt of innocent blood out of Israel, that you may have good. So look at that. No life in prison with guaranteed water and food. Just speed it up. You must not move back the boundary mark of your fellow men. When the ancestors will have set the boundaries in your inheritance that you will inherit it, the land that Jehovah, your God, is giving you to take possession of it. No single witness should rise up against a man respecting any error or any sin. In the case of any sin that he may commit, at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses, the matter should stand good. In case a witness scheming violence should rise up against a man to bring a charge of revolt against him, the two men who have the dispute must also stand before Jehovah, before the priests and the judges who will be acting in those days. And the judges must search thoroughly, and if the witness is false witness and he has brought a false charge against his brother, you must also do to him just as he had schemed to do to his brother. And you must clear away what is bad from your midst. That's interesting. Huh? So if you catch someone being sneaky, do to them what they were going to do. That's pretty cool. It's sort of Old Testament justice. 
So those who remain will hear and be afraid, and they will never again do anything bad like this in your midst. And your eyes should not feel sorry. Soul will be for soul, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Now, that's one of the most famous verses, and I know Gandhi, he has kind of a riddled past. With his little weirdness, uh, lying in the bed with naked people to prove he wouldn't get an erection. Kind of a little bit of a weird dude sometimes. But he said, oh, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Yeah, but sometimes some people deserve to wander around in blindness. If you know that there will be a tit for tat, you're not going to get away with it, there's going to be more fear. I know there's a lot of sociological studies that have this sort of, oh, be really soft on crime, and look how much crime is spreading in the United States. Right? We have a movements now that are really soft on prisoners. Kind of polluting where you should feel sorry for them, when there's people who are homeless, who have mental illness, who deserve more sympathy. It's really disgusting to see these movements feeling sorry for certain criminals. You can repent and change, but certain deeds you don't come back from. And you shouldn't risk. 20. Now we're in 20. Do you know how many 20? In case you go out to the battle against your enemies... And you actually see horses and war chariots, a people more numerous than you, you must not be afraid of them. For Jehovah your God is with you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And it must occur that when you have drawn near to the battle, the priests must also approach and speak to the people. And he must say to them, Hear, O Israel, you are drawing near today to the battle against your enemies. Do not let your hearts be timid. Do not be afraid and run in panic, or shudder because of them. For Jehovah your God is the marching with you to fight for your, against your enemies so as to save you. The officers too must speak to the people, saying, Who is the man that has built a new house and has not inaugurated it? Let him go and return to his house, for he fear he may die in the battle, and another man should inaugurate it. And who has... And who is the man that has planted a vineyard and not begun to use it? Let him go and return to his house, for fear he may die in the battle, and another man should begin to use it. So it's almost like people who haven't, they're kind of young, they haven't got to harvest. And who is the man that has become engaged to a woman and has not taken her? Let him go and return to his house, for fear he may die in battle and another man should take her. That's interesting. And the officers must speak further to the people and say, Who is the man that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, that he may not cause the hearts of his brothers to melt as his own heart. And it must occur that when the officers have finished speaking to the people, they must also appoint chiefs of the armies at the head of the people. Interesting. In case you draw near to a city to fight against it, you must also announce to it terms of peace. And it must occur that if it gives a peaceful answer to you and it has opened up to you, it must even occur that all the people found in it should become yours for forced labor, and they must serve you. But if it does not make peace with you, and it actually makes war with you, and you have to besiege it, Jehovah your God also will certainly give it into your hand, and you must strike every male in it with the edge of the sword. Only the women and the little children and the domestic animals and everything that happens to be in the city, all its spoil you will plunder for yourself, and you must eat the spoil of your enemies, whom Jehovah your God has given you. It's very powerful language here. It's, don't, be, don't be afraid. You must follow the commandments, respect the territory, hold it, divide up the stuff. That is the way you will do to all the cities very far away from you that are not of the cities of these nations. Very interesting. It is only of the cities of these peoples that Jehovah your God is giving you as inheritance that you must not preserve any breathing thing alive, because you should without fail devote them to destruction. The Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Pezazites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, just as Jehovah your God has commanded you. They all end in ites. Do you notice that? That's interesting. 